rather than that, let's get into our first topic here. And our first topic, like I said off the top, is uh, the Obi-Wan series. His uh, most recent... I didn't even know Sun Kang was going to be in the Obi-Wan series until Rick stumbled upon this article here. True. But, so I guess there's a little bit of news for, you know, everybody if you didn't know. So Sun Kang, of Fast, uh, Fast and Furious fame, he is uh, reportedly starring in the Obi-Wan series, but he's... This is like, I would take this part with a grain of salt. Because it's from... They're stating that he could... He is playing the fifth brother inquisitor who was seen in the rebels series and uh the inquisitors themselves like second sister was in the jedi fallen order franchise so the, the inquisitors were like you know if you've never seen any of them i'm sure if you're watching this kind of show you know what an inquisitor is but imagine a dark side lackey for the emperor and vader essentially more so than anything because they they weren't really classified as sith but they were they are sith so it's it's weird. I don't yeah. yeah because they have to try to stick to this rule of two garbage. They can't call them like Sith lords, but they are Sith lords. It just is what it is. Like it's just it's nevertheless they're just some lackeys for the Emperor and Vader. Essentially, they like, really are just like that's all they're henchmen. Yeah, they they had them to go hunt and kill the Jedi after Order sixty six. But they don't do too good. They well. The well. clones did a better job. Yeah. Let's be real. The clones wiped most of them out. So, but in this article here, they are saying that Sun Kang is reportedly playing the fifth brother. Now, the only thing, this isn't necessarily, like I said, this is, comes from what, Cinelix? Is that where it came from? Something. Yeah, okay. So, Cinelix is who is reporting that Sun Kang will be playing um, the an inquisitor in general, but then specifically stating that he he's playing the fifth brother. The only thing that I would say would be odd about this choice is that fifth brother in particular was kind of a big beefy dude. So if they were gonna like make and you don't have to like really have like a likeness to an animated character by any means at all, but I because but in my opinion he could have been any other inquisitor. He could have been the grand inquisitor. And it would have made more sense physically to me. You know what he I mean? He would have been a good Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, like, so, even, I don't know. I could honestly see the Grand Inquisitor as being more of, like, a, a French dude. Because he, like, fenced a lot. Yeah. If you remember, like, from the Rebel show, when he was, like, fucking with Ezra, he would, like, kind of use, like, fencing attacks with his lightsaber. So, yeah. I, I don't know. He, nevertheless, though, just physically, build-wise, I could... I don't really see him playing fifth brother. I find that as a very odd choice because he was, if I'm remembering correctly, a much bigger dude. But nevertheless, I'd be excited to see an Inquisitor in Obi-Wan. It makes sense that an Inquisitor would be in Obi-Wan because if Obi-Wan's hiding out, let's say, obviously we know from like current existing Star Wars lore, now granted they can go in and change any of this stuff, but no one knew he was on Tatooine hiding out. So it would right. make sense to like maybe an Inquisitor gets sent to Tatooine because there is rumors of someone with the Force there in general. Right. So Vader and the Emperor would send an Inquisitor there to check it out, and maybe he runs across Obi Wan. That seems very plausible. Which now, which it seems like they're kind of retconning the whole Obi Wan and Vader had never having met during this stint on Tatooine. We know that Hayden Christensen is going to be in the, the the series, and it's been said that they are going to have a rematch. So, presumably, this Inquisitor is going to die at the hands of Obi Wan. I would think so. And then Vader is going to come down. That's Wait, my what'd guess. You do to my dude. That's my guess. But I would also kind of have to assume that Obi Wan would then have to go off world for this to happen. So maybe the Inquisitor comes across Obi Wan off world. That's been kind of one of my theories throughout this whole thing. And you guys can jump in here too whenever you want. Um, my kind of theory with this is that because we know he survived on Tatooine and he was there the whole time until Luke was 16 years old. Like, and then, the, then, you know, a new hope goes on and does its thing. Anything, any, like, if he runs into Vader, it obviously could not be on Tatooine. Otherwise, it just kind of creates a, a dilemma and plot hole as to, like, well, why did he just leave him there if he knows he was hiding out there? Right. So my theory has always been, like, something, like, I always thought, like, Satine reaches out to him and has to come. But, I mean, Satine dies, so it's like, yeah, she can't really do that. 
but like maybe someone from Satine's lineage, like a uh, what's her name, Bo-Katan reaches out to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe so he goes off world to assist somebody, and then that's how Vader comes across him, and they have the rematch. I don't really know. And just it just seems like he would have to go off world for any of this to really work with the existing canon. But that's just me. And the other, the only other thing to really note in this article. And again, I would take this with a grain of salt as well. But this, uh, I guess, uh, in another story, this one's not the source as isn't actually quoted in here. But they mention that there has been rumors that Bird Box's Vivian Lyra Blair has been cast as a young Leia in the series, which we kind of talked briefly about this, you know, off camera before the show that. It kind of makes sense that a young Leia would be in there because we know a young Luke is reportedly going to be in there as well. Don't expect any dialogue from either of these characters. But if Leia is going to be there, the more interesting thing is that uh, there would presumably be a Jimmy Smith's cameo. So we'll probably see Bail Organa. Obi Wan would likely have been in communication with Bail Organa. Like, you think even, so? Well, if you know Rebels, they they were in communication with Bail Organa. Bail Organa was uh, Fulcrum. One of the fulcrums, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Fulcrum was the alias for any of the informants against the uh, the Empire. So Bail Organa was in constant contact with the Rebel Alliance. And then once Leia came of age, she was also in contact with them. So that would seem to make sense. So, Rick, you hear this information. Sun Kang supposedly going to be a fifth brother. Well, let's just say an Inquisitor in general, and reportedly also perhaps fifth brother. And then Leia's going to be in here. Well, you know what stands out to you? Are you excited for any of this stuff? You, you know, I think it's cool. I think it'd be neat to see an Inquisitor in live action. Um, you know, I think Sung Kang actually would be a pretty good choice. Like now that I'm like kind of analyzing his look and all that sort of stuff, um, it'd be cool to see young Leia, like you said. I mean, if we're going to have a young Luke. That would make sense. But he's not the one I was thinking. I was thinking of like the really beefy dude or the really beefy girl. Actually, she's a. But it's fifth brother. No, but there's a different sister that's like this big, beefy, like. Yeah, that's eight foot tall. She was from. uh, Fallen Order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but that would not he doesn't really he would definitely make a much better Grand Inquisitor just from the yeah. look of it. That's uh, what I'm saying. That's why I didn't. And then it. The casting of having him be fifth brother is what I find to be quite odd. Like, yeah. he's, I think it's he's, ninth he's a sister bigger dude. It's like, the big one. Hmm? I think it's ninth sister who's like the giant one. Yeah. Yeah, that just doesn't, I don't see Sun Kang with that. Yeah, he's not like a big hulking dude by any means, but I just don't, I don't know. I don't get Sun Kang out of that. Yeah, I just didn't get, when I see Sun Kang, like granted, you could do anything that you want with these characters. They yeah. made a character, who cares? Especially when they put them in a bunch of makeup, like, it doesn't really matter how it no. goes. No. But nevertheless, I just don't, I would just, I don't picture Sun Kang being this one. That's why I don't know why they would have to say it'd be fifth brother to say he's an Inquisitor. So, like, yeah. I, could see, I could see him being an Inquisitor. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but, it could be an entirely new character for all that's what I'm that's saying. being made for the show. So, and I, I would honestly almost think that it would. Yeah. Grand Inquisitor would probably work better because I could actually see Sun Kang being a Jedi. Because if you don't like, the Grand Inquisitor was a fallen Jedi. Yeah. So like, it, it, I just also would think that probably a French dude would be better. I don't know. I always picture yeah. a French dude based on the character in the show. We oui, we. Oui. But nevertheless. John, what what stands out to you about these uh this Obi Wan news here? Do you think he's playing fifth brother? Do you think he's even going to be an Inquisitor at all, or would you like to see that? Yeah, I, sure. I mean, I I don't know Rebels, so I don't know what the fifth brother what 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 their role is or what what they do. But uh, beyond what you just said, so I mean that, that makes sense. If Vader would send him. I I. I did kind of wonder, like when you were talking about him being Obi Wan being drawn off planet to, um, by somebody else, uh, from Tatooine, so that he could then eventually encounter Vader and have their duel. I also thought it it could be, you know, it could be a circumstance where, you know, Vader, obviously throughout everything that happened, had a part of him that was still. Even when he was Vader, it was that part that Luke drew on that was still good, that still was on the light side. Even even, even as dark as he went, he's, there was still that small glimpse of 
hoping and that Luke saw. And I don't know if it would be something where he finds, maybe this guy finds Obi-Wan, comes to Tatooine and Obi-Wan dispatches of this guy, but Vader then knows where Obi-Wan is. And he, maybe the, because of the chain of command, the information never makes it back to the Emperor. So obi or Vader goes to confront him and they have a face off and maybe Vader gets the upper hand. And, and just because of their time together, because of their history together, you know, Vader, when he has a chance to take him out, decide there's that small little glimmer of light side that's still in that won't let him actually kill Obi-Wan and leaves him there to just spend out his days as a hermit on Tatooine, you know, without ever, without, with Obi-Wan never revealing the per the why he was hiding out there in the first place. So that, that still preserves a lot of the original trilogy story without, um, having to you know bring him off planet I, I think i think you're probably right i think that ultimately i think they probably will bring him off planet especially with leia's involvement if that's true um i just thought that there is a way to keep him still on tatooine and have them interact without with with vader still not going after him later on like like he decides like hey, look i'm leaving him alone you know we because of our shared history because of my one-time respect for him as a mentor or as a a call or I don't know is a colleague I guess but whatever um you know I'm gonna I'm gonna let him live out his days here he's not gonna be trouble to us so you think Vader would do that after the last words that he says to him the classic I hate you we watched it I don't know if you were here when I pulled up the last battle of Revenge of the Sith while I was testing the projector screen and oh, he's he very God. adamantly says I hate you and he I does get he gets pretty fucked up by Obi Wan. Yeah, Obi-Wan. but <laughs> but Vader. But uh, to me, uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Vader, when he's making his transition from Anakin to Vader, is is very he's very loose cannon. After he is put inside that suit, he becomes much more stoic and much more reserved. You don't see him. He doesn't have a Kylo Ren freak out, destroy a room, get pissed, and force crush everything in his path. Um, that later on seen. everything he everything well that's true but everything we've sense. seen in the original trilogy he is very distant calculated. and cold and calculated and even even the times where he does kind of uh, for lack of a better way to put it lose his temper like when the when the officer is kind of back talking to him uh, in uh is it is it is it is it empire i don't think it was empire i think it was the original star wars when when the guy calls when he, he chokes says, his co-worker. Ancient, uh, ancient myths. Yeah, when he says ancient myths and whatever or, or hokey, yeah, that hokey was religions. The first one, yeah. That was that was yeah, ho- new hope. Um he when he force him. chokes him. Even that, even that wasn't like done in like this just fit of rage. Like he very methodically was like, Okay, I'll show you what I can do. <laughs> like right. and so I think maybe he's much more calculating and maybe I, I don't know. It was just uh, something that occurred to me when you were talking about like how do they how can they have a confrontation when we know that Vader doesn't or doesn't go after him on Tatooine. Like, like if Vader knows he's there, he would go after him, you would think, but maybe he doesn't because he does know he's there. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I would think more so than anything the Emperor would force him to. Because if the Emperor finds out about it, he's not gonna have a choice. Well, and that's why I was talking about chain of command. Like maybe the information gets to Vader and Vader never relays it to Palpatine. So Vader compartmentalizes that and is like Okay. Well, yeah. or, or just tells Palpatine, yeah, yeah, we found him and took care of him or something. I don't know. Because does Palpatine, Palpatine never references Obi Wan in the original trilogy, right? No. There's no, there's no discussion about them having fought or him. Yeah. So no, no. they don't even have a scene with Vader is telling him that he was there and like died on the ship. Right. Yeah. Like that happens yeah. and you never even see Vader tell any, anybody about it. He no, just yeah. steps on the no, robe and walks away. Confused. Hey, yeah. Vader, like, Vader, Vader never references him again, does he? I don't think he does. He reference him to Luke even. And he does. Empire? To Luke. He does. Yeah. yeah. He says just like Obi-Wan. He said, Obi-Wan trained you well. Yeah, uh, that's right. You're right. But that's really it. The only yeah. thing I could I totally, totally buy what you're saying. I just think in the end, it depends on. Do we know for sure? Is this t- this takes place within like what the eight years at like the middle eight years or is it explicitly? I don't know why, but eight years is jumping out to me like it's been said before about when this show takes place. Like, is it eight years after the events of 
Revenge of the Sith, or is there like a window between like a, a certain point in time? Like I that, don't know that there's like a specific window because there's like yeah. there's like thirty years in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, so I know there's like a I feel like they said like in eight years something there's like an eight year window that I thought it was sixteen years. years or something. 16 years. Oh, yeah, it would have been 16 years because of Luke. Yeah. So that makes sense. So there would have been... Maybe there was something that has to do with Rebels in that. I don't know. It would just depend on, as far as Vader, my point with this whole thing, is that with Vader being the more cold, calculated, and more stoic presence, I think would be a direct correlation to how soon after Revenge of the Sith is. Yeah. Because if this was yeah. like the next day i could very well see him still being kind of peevish you right. know yeah being more like young anakin but if this is like five years later and he's you know been spending five years being tortured and molded by the emperor then yeah he's probably going to be a lot more reserved you yeah. know like because yeah. he does they, they do insinuate that as soon as the like if you've watched rebels he was very all at that point in time he was already like acting like the vader we know from yeah a, the, a new hope and like so. that ezra vader ahsoka duel like yeah like he's mm -hmm. just still very calculated and yeah because vader's in the first season of rebels like quite a bit he, he's in there for and, like six episodes and anakin and vader are all about power and like having control and power and stuff so maybe he you know, i could also see him justify it as like killing obi-wan ends his suffering like right now I, being an outcast having no power having the ability to do nothing about the empire it might be a fate worse than death that's in, what i was gonna in say vader's, in vader's eyes yeah it's yeah. just like he's living alone on the planet i hate so much like you know just like why kill him at that point yeah yeah i i just i can see it both ways because we obviously know that like anakin more so than vader blames obi-wan not just for him and like how you know him having to become vader by losing all his limbs and stuff but because his mind was so corrupted and confused he blames vader for the death of padme you know what i yeah. mean like so i could totally see or he blames obi-wan i don't know what i said but vader blames obi-wan for like the death of padme and then like everything so yeah. i don't know i could not a fan see of him Obi wanting to just like explicitly murder him but then yeah. i could also see him like since there is that good in him that you mentioned that Luke saw in him that like, you know, maybe perhaps he does find out about it and just says, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna, if the emperor finds you, then I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Right. That kind of thing. But, I think it's a very outside chance. That's what happens. I think it's more likely because it would just, I mean, one of the things about star Wars just in general is all the different locales and places that you go to, throughout you know the movies and the shows and stuff and so it would be odd for them to film a series solely set on Tatooine. so i think it's more likely that your scenario plays out where he gets drawn off off of Tatooine for whatever reason um but mm -hmm. i just i was trying to come up with why how vader could know where he was and still let him just be there so yeah which makes sense it like, does the okay. fact that uh i could also see him just wanting to go off world because like the barren desert gets kind of boring for people, yeah. especially in Star Wars when we've seen it so many times. Like, yeah. and like, sure, they'll probably have a scene where Obi Wan goes into the the you know the same bar, just like they did in Mandalorian. Like, right, probably he goes into the those. cantina. Yeah, because that is on the way to the spaceport. So if he does go off world, he will probably have that scene where he goes in there. Maybe old you're gonna get a Aaron over cameo. there in the corner or something. That'd be really cool if they had like a an Alden Ehrenreich cameo or something. So of all the shows, I was surprised they didn't announce for a Star Wars series was uh, uh another Solo something. Yeah, like I'd it would be like, cool just to have him, even if he just glances at the camera and he's just sitting in the background. Yeah, like, like just something like maybe like, like Obi Wan walks past him and they make eye contact. Like, yeah. yeah, but like in a friendly way this time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. something. Just kind of like nod their think, heads. Do you think he'll run across Cassian? Possible. That's possible. Yeah. Be because they they've got the Andor show coming out, so I kind of wondered if they he might. It's got to be right around the same time frame, right? 
Somewhat, yeah, it, I would think I don't, so. I don't know, because I don't know. We know Cassian obviously died in Rogue One, which was A New Hope. Sure. So it would be a younger Cassian. Slightly. A couple of years. Well, like. we, don't, we still don't know how. It Early could be this. eight years. You know, if, if Luke's eight, I think that's where I was getting eight from, because I think the, the character, the, the actor we know or who was rumored to be cast as Luke was around eight years old or something. I don't know. I don't know why I'm thinking eight, but I'm I'm assuming this is taking place eight years after Revenge of the Sith. That means Cassian would be, you know, eight years before A New Hope at that point, because Luke was sixteen. In yeah. A New Hope. How's how's this actress that they're saying is Leia? Do you have any She's idea? She's like eight to ten years old from what I could see. Is she? Yeah. Which okay. would that So goes that would in then make the, yeah. the Luke thing too. Yeah. Yeah. What's her name? I'm trying to pull it up. Vivian Lyra Blair. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see, and then we can we can get uh, at least some clarification. She looks really young. She's very young. She's like a little kid. Yeah, like she looks really young. I don't know. Where's her age? Let's just say her age. This is Google, yeah. Age. Yeah, eight years old. Yeah, so she's eight. So yeah, so if she's gonna be in it. She'll be between oh, we could say eight and ten then for sure. And her zodiac so sign is a Gemini for anybody. She's a Gemini, yeah. So yeah. you're looking at a decade after. So Cassian is probably too. He's gonna be too young. He would be too young at this point because Cassian he does was say what? that he was born into it's... rebellion though. Been in this fight since he was six yeah. years old. Yeah, he does say that. In Rogue One, they, so he's he was early, you know. His parents were rebels. He was born into it, and so he's always been a rebel. Rebel, so born definitely it's possible. I don't know if they're. It really depends on what Lucasfilm wants to do with the the series. Like, do they want to connect it, or do they want to have it be its own thing? Yeah, you know, because I don't yeah. think it would hurt it to to because it'd just be kind of like a tease. Because I think Andor is probably the next Star Wars show we're going to see. Yeah, they've been working Andor's on that being for filmed right now. Yeah, they've been working on that for a long time. So, well, think they were Obi -Wan, filming Boba, but I don't know. Do you think Obi Wan's going to be? Do you think it's all going to be contained within like a, a few months' time or a year span of time, or do you think they'll span? I guess if they got the kids in it, though, that I mean, that kind of locks them into one kind of set time frame. I was just wondering if, because I, I don't, I don't anticipate them. them. I don't they anticipate to do doing a season else. two. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think they would do a season two, but like, that like all nice. things, we know money talks. And yeah. if it's a, we already know Ewan McGregor's a beloved, his Obi-Wan's a beloved character. If not one of the most. Yeah. Like everybody hates the prequels. I don't hate the prequels, but every, I don't hate they, the prequels. they have a bad reputation, but everybody, I would say unanimously loves Ewan's. The reputation's getting better. People are starting to understand it more and accept it. More. Well, when you compare it to the sequel trilogy, they miss the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> like so, all, all it takes is something worse to take its place, and then it's like, oh yeah, they weren't too bad, were they? Right. No. Um, for for me though, with the prequels, so we don't. I don't, don't want to get into a prequels versus sequels, you know, sequel hating thing. But like, I grew up with the prequels, so I have a much easier attachment to them than most people would. So. Yeah. I recognize that they're not very good movies as in a whole, but there's good stuff, and they feel like Star Wars. That's the most important thing. Like some things don't feel like Star Wars; they feel like Star. They Wars. do feel even like Star if they're Wars. bad. They still feel like Star Wars. I sat through the first two seasons of the Clone Wars, dude. Like I can sit through anything. Right. I sat through the sequels, man. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know if they'll do a second one. I don't anticipate them being a se like a s season two of Kenobi. No, I, I think mean, if it's really good. Sometime. Yeah, I mean, if it's we'll, we'll I guess we'll get a good idea if when Obi Wan comes out, if once the Emmys come around, if it's nominated for limited series, then that then we'll know. Right? There's not they, yeah. they they won't have a sequel at that point. And if they do, they would. I don't know what the rules are for that. Like going forward. Um, and like, because uh, like you have to explicitly be a limited series and like nominate the somebody thing for did a that. limited series. And then I don't think you would be like, I don't know. Somebody did that. Somebody was nominated for a limited series and then they decided to make more of it. I think it might have been, um, what's the show about the women 
and uh, the one guy beats on her wife. Got Nicole Kidman and um, oh yeah, Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies. I think Big Little Lies w- was nominated under a limited series Emmy because because the first season covers the book, the mm-hmm. entire first book, and then HBO it did so well. I think HBO back for a second or maybe even a third season and there was a lot of controversy because it had been in the limited series and it ended up having a second season which would make it an ongoing yeah yeah so, so. so i don't know if there's actual repercussions for that i guess the repercussions for that would be they would no longer nominate it for any emmys right sure like you're so just like, out of it yeah. yeah like you're not you you can't be under consideration at that point would be my mm-hmm. guess so i guess so that's not like a sure way of knowing what they're gonna do but that's like the first indication that we'll have it unless they pull a marble and say like at the end like obi-wan will return in season two right, like, right. or obi-wan will return in ahsoka it is something. disney like i yeah. don't know we'll just have to wait and see i'm excited for it anyway either yeah. way though it'd be cool to see Inquisitors. It all that all makes sense. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do since they are obviously doing some sort of retconning with Vader having that fight with him. I, I'm I'm excited for it. So yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. Question is, so guys, though uh, the question is though, guys, I don't know what the hell I just said. The question is though, guys, what do you think about this? Do you think that Sun are you happy that Sun King is going to be in it? Do you, are you happy that Leia is going to be in it in some capacity, supposedly? And do you think he's going to be an Inquisitor or the Fifth Brother in particular? Whatever you think, let us know down in the comment section below.